John here guys and today we're gonna see if I can feel the difference in the 90 FPS camera from HD Zero. The test was to run back to back with the same quad just by adjusting the settings from 540 to 90 FPS to 720 60 FPS. I was actually gonna run two quads back to back with two different cameras but his suggestion eliminated some of those variables by testing this on the exact same quad. I could get a better apples apples comparison by just seeing if I could account for the difference in the feeling, getting the same exact image, same sensor, just those settings changing. 90 frames per second, moving all the way up from 60 on this HD Zero V2 camera. Which one's better? Which one can you feel? Can you feel the latency? Now as a gamer, if I'm playing on 30 FPS versus 60 FPS versus 100 FPS, I can absolutely tell the difference. I flew these things back to back like Joe Mama suggested this same frame just adjusting the frame rates now whenever i was flying i couldn't really tell the reduction in detail but when you actually just sit on the ground and change between 540 and 720 you can actually absolutely see a reduction in the detail you can see if you're pointing at a tree or something with leaves you can really see some of that detail go away but i don't really notice it looking any worse when flying so it's a worthwhile trade-off a little bit of that image quality for a faster refresh i could absolutely tell the refresh it felt really good flying my first pack of the day on 90 fps but as joe mama suggested i got a full three four minutes pack and immediately put another pack in switched it to 720 60 and flew again and it just felt so different i knew it was the same quad the same props the same battery and it just felt like I was almost drunk. My reaction times just felt a little bit different. You can see as I'm flying, um, I'm kind of clipping the gates a little bit and you can see whenever I make a turn, I'm pausing for a second because it's not where my brain is telling me it should be. Even that very tiny fraction of a second difference is enough to make you adjust. Now your brain can adjust to anything. Before this, flying on 60 FPS was already lower latency with the HD Zero goggles than I'd ever experienced before. But knowing that it feels sluggish after flying 90 FPS means that I could potentially get some benefit from flying that. Now, whenever I decided to start gaming at different frame rates, I tried something like Elden Ring. Uh, that game with even 30 or 40 FPS, I can play perfectly fine and it's totally great. Now, when I go to a shooter like Modern Warfare 2, Going from 30 FPS is almost unplayable. 60 FPS is pretty playable, but when I go up to closer to 90 to 100, I can actually get a lot better reaction times and more kills higher on the leaderboards. And playing something like the Velocidrone Simulator makes even bigger of a difference. So it depends on what type of game you or playing. When I'm playing Elden Ring, 30 to 40 FPS is enough to do most of the game, but when I'm playing Modern Warfare 2, going from about 60 FPS to about 90 FPS makes a much bigger difference because you need a little bit more fast reaction time to defeat people in a huge multiplayer deathmatch. How else are you supposed to own noobs? Similarly, when I went from a 60 hertz monitor to a 165 hertz monitor on Velocidrome Simulator, I noticed my times improving that same day. So am I affected positively by improved refresh rates in certain scenarios? Yes, I absolutely am. I'm sensitive to that and I see the benefits of flying it. But Will it improve your flying? You have to decide how sensitive you are, what type of game you are playing. If you're cruising around long ranging, you may feel no difference at all. If you bando bash, explore, race, or anything where you might be able to react even a fraction of a second faster could mean the difference in crashing your drone into the ocean or mid-airing the person ahead of you on the track it could be a game changer for you i can't tell you how many times i've been able to see the person dip in front of me on a track and i could not react fast enough to avoid hitting them could this camera keep us both up in the air at least 
some of the time. When I was playing with lowly 60 frames per second, I was getting killed like I was a first year noob. And when I upgraded to over 100 FPS with the addition of a gaming monitor that could do high refresh rates and a 3070 graphics card, I was able to just own noobs all day left and right. Now, is FPV gonna have the same difference? Because a lot of this is based on timing and a lot of this is based on muscle memory, but everybody flies different. I feel like there are pilots out there. Alex Vanover is the one I like to use as a good example of somebody who memorizes the track like a musician memorizes a sheet of music and he plays this instrument of flight so elegantly. In fact, this Tiny Trainer was built by him. I just transplanted it onto a V2, but it's his setting, his tune. All I did was change out the camera to the 90 FPS. Now, before I go any further, I have to tell you that I've already bought more of these 90 FPS cameras. And I also have to confess that the one I used to, for this review, I killed it. I killed it after only about four or five packs. It was due to me not securing the canopy on this Tiny Trainer V2 correctly. I have more details about that in my review for this. That was a me problem being very lazy. Uh, it was not a problem with the camera itself or the frame but those things just happen reviewers curse i'm man enough to admit whenever i mess something up and mess it up i did but wow in that short amount of time i could tell the difference substantially so what do you think guys is this the future of racing is it the future of micros are you going to be flying something like this very soon in your town can you even get a hold of them because if they get too popular are you even going to be able to get one i'm selfishly going to order the rest of the 90 fpf cameras that i'm gonna want before releasing this video just in case this spikes the popularity and then you can't get them you know how many times that's happened guys we release a video we have something up and then the stock immediately goes out and you can't get it so sorry normally i try to leave enough time for everybody to get some but i'm being selfish this time guys and i'm trying to hoard them for myself we flew dji and i was flying dji two two days in a row uh 120 frames on uh, v2 goggle now switch to hd0 90 frame per second and i gotta say it's easier to fly hd0 90 frames per second because i guess because of the latency it's smaller like it doesn't mean you can't fly high performance with dji you can especially good pilots like Evan Vanover, you know, they can fly very high performance freestyle and racing in DJI, but it's just easier on 80 to 90 frames per second. But for shit pilots... Yeah, which is like most of the, you know, shit pilots. You, sir, are a shit pilot. Yes, pure shit. It yeah. did feel really good. It, really does, it does feel good. We got a little bit extra interference at night spot because of all these buildings and the Wi-Fi. It's a little bit extra interference, but even still, it's just... It's just easier to fly with lower latency, that's for sure. The price is only $65 for this camera, but you also have to add about seven bucks for the MIPI cable. So it's roughly two times the price of the current standard, the Predator Nano V5 analog camera. Now I only had one tester camera unit initially. I already bought two more and that was before I realized that what happened was I sliced the MIPI cable of the HD0 VTX and two of those little stranded wires, one of them must have been power that was flopping around because it also killed my video transmitter and the camera. Neither one of them actually took a very physical impact and so I'm really disappointed in myself for allowing that to happen. Again, that was a me problem. You guys to know, I'm not switching out every quad yet, but I'm willing to start switching out slowly. I do race with about five five inch quads and I'm hoping to have three tiny trainers built up for this season. And so I'm willing to go ahead and switch about half of that fleet over to 90 FPS. I don't want to convert everything because sometimes, you know, you just need to go back to regular, old, reliable, cheap, and durable analog. The other thing that is keeping me switching is actually not the video system itself. It's the fact that on analog, I can run the Ghost hybrid board and I only need one board for my video transmitter and my receiver. Now, Immersion RC has been promising for well over a year to develop a flight controller with Ghost on board so that I could have three layers. Now that doesn't exist yet. So what happens is if I'm running HD0, I also have to run an external separate receiver and find somewhere to stick it. That's a very silly problem to complain about 
but in a world where I've been used to racing with only three boards in there and never having to worry about squirreling away a receiver for the last few years, uh, it's just kind of a bummer. So maybe we can convince the Express LRS guys to make a flight controller with Express LRS built in and a little antenna that sticks out. I would love to be able to run HD0 with only three boards and not have to fiddle with a receiver. If Ghost isn't gonna do it, Express LRS guys, maybe you can do it for us. This camera is an absolute game changer. I didn't want it to be that big of an effect. I really hoped it wasn't going to be. I was complaining as soon as I flew 60 FPS and I could tell the difference. I didn't really want to have to go on a buying excursion of buying three, four, potentially I'm going to need at least 10 of these cameras if I fully decide to switch and probably another eight VTXs and it's just not something I really wanted to start doing but I think I might have to at least dip my toe in a little further. I'll let you guys know if I end up doing it um, fully but at this point I'm ready to go halfway. I've already started printing the HD0 90fps open racer pod so I'm gonna try this on 5 inch next guys. One other note, use a different antenna and this tiny trainer. This is the TBS Triumph Pro Nano. Another one that's really, really good is the Axie Nano, the UFL version of both of these. And before I was using the Foxier Lollipop Micro and I noticed a much better HD0 reception using this antenna. So I think it's much more critical to have a really high quality antenna on the quad side for HD0 than it is for analog. I had noticed that Joe Mama's footage at the night spot always seemed a little bit clearer than mine. Just keep that in mind. I usually feel like the Lollipop series is perfectly good for analog, but spend a little bit extra if you're running HD0 because it doesn't have perfect penetration. You do gonna get some breakup by by upgrading your antenna that breakup is a lot less i noticed thanks guys